You know, um, for yeah. of the you know, uh, three years ago, I remember sitting in a, a room with a, a Renze, uh, his mom and dad, and, and uh, my entire support team, staff, academic personnel, and everything. And we talked about how best uh, to make him successful here. Uh, three years later, I see a young man that has put 20 pounds on his body. He has done an outstanding job for us academically. He has grown immensely in his ability to uh, articulate and, and present himself. He has grown socially as well, too. And his basketball IQ has grown immensely, too, in three years. And if somebody comes to me and then says, uh, I need to do this uh, for playing time or whatever, uh, I have to support them, and regardless of his reasons for doing it. He has done everything we've asked him to do. Uh, I'm going to miss him. It's been a rough couple of days because I love the kids so much. But he has to make the decisions in terms of his future and what's coming down the road as to where he feels like he needs to get to. Uh, really, uh, I think, and I look at minutes, uh, obviously Robo's having a stellar season. He's a, a pro that's sitting there. You're, you're playing behind. There's not a lot of minutes there. Uh, with some of the players that have come in and their development, they've, they've come on so quickly, the minutes are getting squeezed. So if an individual says at the end of the semester, I want to go now, that will have me another semester and a year to play, I have to support that. And, and I do. I've talked to his, his parents. And uh, for him to make this decision was a big move on his part. Uh, he has made it, and we have to accept it. Uh, we have a, enough talent in our program uh, to weather all of this. And now we just – we get back to practicing. We get ready for Ryder and everything. So, but you know, I've talked to people about this before that uh, in college basketball, which is very different for whatever reason, many other sport, that that 40 40 percent of your incoming freshmen uh, are going to transfer by the end of the sophomore year. 40 percent across the board in all of college basketball. And we had them a little bit longer than that. So it's not a an Ernie Kent problem. It's not a Washington State problem. And I don't quite frankly think it's a college basketball problem because I think it's a societal problem that you deal with transferring all over the place, corporate world as well too. But he's special in my heart, and he always will be there. We're, we're really, really going to miss him, uh, Arenze, the person, uh, first and foremost. From a basketball perspective, what he can do defensively and how long he is, is does that kind of hurt your depth and what you guys can do on the court when he's out there? Uh, it hurts our experience. But in terms of our, our depth, we can move C.J. Ellerby into the top of our, our press, and he can defend real well. Jazz Coons can play the top of our press. When Isaiah gets back 100%, he's an outstanding defender. So we still have that length that's sitting out there on the floor uh, in terms of our depth. That's one of the reasons we did go out and, and recruit this class and recruit the long athletic players coming in in anticipation of anything like this happening. Uh, and sure enough, here we are, and we feel like from a basketball perspective, uh, you may lose some experience because he's been in the program and he's seen the conference and those things. Uh, but we do have people we feel very, really, really capable of stepping in and giving us what we need. With, with, with the combination of Arenze's departure and, and the loss of Montana, against Montana State, what's the morale of the team right now? Awesome. Uh, we've had two really good days of practice. Uh, I think the best thing uh, in basketball sometimes for young people uh, is to really get after it after a loss at Montana State. It's very, very, very difficult to score 90 points in a game, shoot over 50%, and have 22 assists and lose a basketball game. That's hard to do. You almost have to work at doing that. But yet our defense let us down in the game. And we've spent all of our focus uh, really getting after each other, getting back to our basics defensively, which, is, which has created some very competitive practices, and that's a good thing. Just with regards to the perimeter defense again there too, 16 threes against Montana State. Do you look at that as just a matter of players maybe not reading into the scout as well as they should have, or is it just them needing to get more comfortable with each other on the court? Well, a lot of times you want to pick on your own team. You need to give the other team some credit to make 16 threes and not have it on a scouting report where a guy shoots the ball as well as he shot it. Uh, he goes for 31 and 10 on you. Uh, I would 
I would say look at their scores from here on out and see if they have those kind of nights. They played lights out basketball. Uh, some of it had to do with us, but they played at a very high level for them and shot the ball extremely well. So give them credit. They hit some tough, tough threes where we were where we needed to be, and the ball was still going in. Case in point, the one they hit at the half from you know, 45 feet away from the bucket, nothing but net, too. Not only did they hit them, they hit them with nothing but net. So they had an excellent shooting night for them. And it took 95 points to beat us in a college basketball game. Uh, I'm going to look at that and say, get back to the basics on your defense. Uh, your offense is certainly moving in a positive direction, but we got to clean up some things defensively. And especially with Arense being gone now, what more do you want to see out of Jeff Pollard and then Devontae and Isaiah when he gets fully healthy there at the five? Well, Jeff Pollard and, and Devontae and Isaiah really don't have anything to do with, with the Renze. They just need to man that position. They're the one uh, group of players, with except in Isaiah, we could switch him out to the four. He can guard a four. But, but Jeff and, and Coop, uh, they're really limited to how much switching they can do and who they can guard on the floor. So Isaiah, when he gets back healthy, he's certainly going to have to be a guy that, that really helps us out in our press. He really doesn't play the top of the press where Renzi played. He just gives us the flexibility to move CJ, uh, Jazz, Marvin is another guy we're counting on because he can play multiple positions just like CJ. So it, it'll create more playing time, more of a rhythm for other guys, and uh, I, I think we're capable of handling that. And with Renzi one more time, I mean, every transfer is a little bit different. Each player has a different reason for wanting to leave. Just as a coach, you've been doing this for a long time. How do you separate your own emotions from each player's individual decision? Well, we spend uh, an enormous amount of time. And if anybody has, has been in any of my programs for the last 20 years uh, to where we really dig into young people's lives, what I mean by that is uh, those retreats are probably the most rewarding time in my career to get young people to open up and divulge what is going on in their life or in their past, what has happened, and then have an opportunity to really understand how to coach them because now you have a personal touch to it. So when you lose one of them, and I don't care for whatever reasons, from a coaching perspective for me, you don't want to lose anybody. But when it does happen, yeah, it tugs at your heart. It, it does. And then I have to take those days to process and realize i got to continue to push and coach the young men that are in my program. And that's why even with, with Lorenzo, he's come so far in terms of where he was coming in when he came in the door that emotionally it does bother you. But you have to get ready for the next game and have to get your team ready and everything. But uh, as I said before, our, our paths will cross again with Lorenzo. He's an excellent young man. Has been, his parents have been outstanding in their support of what we needed to do to move the needle with him and everything. And they're good people. They're one of my favorite group of parents. And we'll get a chance to cross paths again. When you kind of look at the, the top 25 in the Pac-12 in the last few years, I mean, the, a lot of people would say that the Pac-12 is, is kind of down in basketball right now. Do you think it is down, do you, or do you think it's just kind of cyclical where maybe these few years you don't have as many teams in the top 25, as many teams advancing through to the NCAA tournament, or, or do you think there's a problem right now with, with the Pac-12 recruiting or anything to, to that effect? I think um, what is happening in the Pac-12 are, are, are teams are having to really, in some cases, redefine who they are as they rebuild, reload, or whatever. And I think the coaching is stepping up and, and going to have to coach uh, even that much, even more so in this conference. But it's an opportunity, I, I think, for the conference is going through a phase right now that I fully expect it to recover to. Some teams have got to just grow up during the Pac-12 conference, gain their confidence, get on rolls and those things. But uh, it is definitely uh, a younger conference. Uh, it is definitely a, a conference that's been hit pretty hard in the last uh, three or four years in terms of its talent depletion, but it's got excellent young talent that is growing up, and it's just going to take a little bit of time to, to grow up. Uh, this preseason is critical for all of us in the conference to find an identity, find out who we are, find out what you can and cannot do. And in the conference, more so, and I say this every year, but more so maybe than any year in the last six to ten years, it is just going to be – uh, it's going to be entertaining for the fans, but it's going to be a grueling conference race because everybody, and I really mean it, everybody and anybody can beat anybody else in the conference. And, and nobody, I don't think, has hit that groove yet where they can say they're unbeatable because it, it, the conference is just too well balanced. Bright lights in Vegas next week. I mean, the Las Vegas Classic, that's in the Orleans Arena. That's It's a different experience for a lot of these new guys. I mean, what are you going to do with, as a coach then with your staff just to prepare them for what to expect in tournament play down there? Well, we haven't even looked that far ahead yet, and the reason for that is um, you've got a NCAA team in Ryder 
coming in on Monday with all their players back that went to the tournament. Uh, our, all the students are going to be gone. And that's going to be a, a game where we have to, again, generate tremendous energy from ourselves to manage the game and everything. And I'm hoping people will, many people as possible in, in town will come out and watch the game. And then you turn around on Wednesday and play Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. And again, a, a solid team coming in that we're going to have to generate energy in the building and play the game. And then we leave Thursday morning uh, to spend Thursday through Sunday down in Las Vegas. The energy in Las Vegas will take care of itself because of bright lights competition. Uh, if we do our job, uh, you got San Diego and a potential uh, winner between Drake and New Mexico State. We could be playing New Mexico State again if, if we can get our job done and everything else. We come out of that trip and guys literally leave Las Vegas and, and head to Christmas break. And we rejoin each other in Spokane and we play Santa Clara with a three-day window to get ready for them and, and playing them on a weekend as well too. And then we take a couple of days off and come home and then we're on the road again at UW, opening conference play where Friday, Saturdays are sitting in Seattle and we come home again and we leave Wednesday through Sunday on the road again playing at Utah, Colorado. This is a grueling stretch of our season coming up. And we can't look too far ahead because it would be a little bit mind-boggling because of the travel that's coming and, and how the conference three games are starting out. We literally look at the next game and the next game only. We don't worry about anything else. And this next game is a very good rider team coming in here that we're going to have to do some things to offset some of the things they do, and we're going to have to weather some things that they'll try to do to us to get ourselves an opportunity to win the game. And that's where our focus has been these last couple of days in practice. What makes them a tough matchup? Experience, experience, experience. Uh, they, they can shoot the ball. Uh, they're tough physically and everything. And, and, you know, they're, they've, they've got a schedule where they're playing, I believe, on Friday night, traveling in on, on Saturday. Excuse me, playing on Saturday night, traveling in on Sunday, practicing and playing us on Monday. So it, it, the experience factor is the biggest thing, that they've been in big games and they've been in that one-and-done environment of an NCAA tournament. You still like playing the, the neutral site game in, in the Trace Cities? And, you know, that probably could have been a home game if you guys had wanted it to be. You know, uh, hindsight... With, with how we played in our last game at home and as many students came out that were entertained by the game, it would have been good to have that other game right back there in Beasley again before the students left because they, they, they were coming and everything. But when we set our schedule, we set it based on enough people over there saying, would you come over here to play? And we'd love to see your team over again like you've done before. And we've agreed to do that. And I will continue to do that. Maybe we'll adapt just a little bit more where, where the – it's this next week coming up where there are no – the finals are over, students are gone, maybe that's an opportunity uh, to go over there and play and everything. And with Isaiah Wade real quick here, I've spoken to him <coughs> quite a bit over the past week or two now. Uh, just looking at, you know, his growth and evolution as a basketball player, especially with where he was at coming out of high school, when you see Isaiah Wade and the impact that – the scholarship that you and your staff gave him has made on him, is that really, you know, in your mind just the – quintessentially what it's all about when you make an offer like that? Well, it, it is. I think from a, a competitive nature, uh, everything still comes back to winning and being successful. But when you look at a young man like Isaiah Wade, and I thought he, he's made one of the best all-time comments that I've heard ever come out of a student athlete. And that comment was, after he got here, he said, I would have walked to come to school here to be a kook. And when you know his background and what he's gone through and how quickly he has adapted uh, socially, uh, academically here, and basketball-wise to allow himself to be coached, uh, I'm very, very proud of him for where he's come from and what he's done so far. And he has a chance uh, to be really, really good here when he can get the injuries out of the way and get back to playing again because he, he's bought in. He's like a sponge in the other areas. Uh, he has to, he had to go through some emotional things to adapt and adjust, and yet he, he listens and he allows himself to be coached. He's going to be one of those unique success stories in college basketball. Uh, the fact that he's already on this campus – as with any of these athletes, they're already a success when you understand what some of them have gone through in their life before getting here. He's going to be special because he's got a, a special, unique story, and I couldn't be more prouder of an athlete than I could of him. In talking about his own individual recruitment, one of the things he mentioned to me when you called him on the phone that first time is that conversation was about everything that had nothing to do with basketball, if that makes sense. Just 
in your experience as a recruiter, how do you relate to some of these kids who are coming from backgrounds that aren't the best and just kind of instill that mentorship and father-like figure with them? Well, it is in recruiting. We call it, you hit the, the other words you, you hit was the mentoring piece of it. And, and I think young people, regardless of what background they come from, regardless, in this day and age, if, if they're here on a college campus dealing with all the hype of athletics, um, they need mentoring in their lives. Still that, that growth that they would get. And our program is based right around all of that. We try to do as best job as we can. Some it works with, some it doesn't. But as long as I've been in coaching, as long as I will remain in coaching, we're always going to try to mentor our athletes to the best of their ability to help them grow internally as well in terms of becoming a man as well as a basketball player out on the floor. And then lastly now, we've seen flashes of Isaiah's potential. Obviously the injuries have impacted some of his development, but just what do you want to see Isaiah work on and improve on the most, and what's his ceiling with this program? I think for him, uh, the biggest thing is we need him back because of his athleticism and his toughness. When I get him back, he needs to continue to work on understanding the complete system of what we do out on the floor. Because when, he, when he, he's playing now without maybe total 100% grasping it, and look at what he's doing. I can only imagine where he's going to be when he gets comfortable uh, with reading plays, first option, second option, third option, fourth options in some cases. With all of that athleticism and toughness, we miss him right now on the basketball floor. And I, I can't wait to get him back because he takes our team to a different level.